Hey guys, this is going to be a kiting and position guide against Windwalker Monks. Um, it's a twos game, but you can apply it to threes as well. We're up against Windwalker Disc Priest as a Lock Shaman. Uh, Windwalkers are by far the hardest counter to Affliction Warlock you've ever seen. Um, the reason for that is it is literally impossible to kite a half or even a, a bad one, you, you can't kite a bad Windwalker. So facing a half decent one or a good one is a nightmare. Um, the reason for that is Windwalkers have the most mobility in the game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Warlocks have Port, Warlocks have Soul Shape, Warlocks have Sacralash Slow, Warlocks have Gateway, and you still can't really get away from one. If they want to stick on you, they will, and there is nothing you can do about it. Um, I'm going to play this game out and show you how to survive and kite against them and where to stand. So... Let's take a look at what happens. So at the start of the game, on Ash Mains, what I like to do is first cast the gateway first. The reason why you cast the gateway first is because if they rush in, um, the chances of you getting the gateway off are higher than if you drop a port and then cast the gateway. That's going to cost you like a global, give them more time to stop you. So I always like to cast the gateway first. I don't really care if I get stopped after the gateway goes off. Um, I can always just drop a port instantly anyway. It doesn't take long compared to casting a long ass gateway cast. So anyways, Cast, cast the gateway first. Um, pillar to pillar generally is a, is a good idea from here to here. And then put your portal behind the pillar. Now your goal against this is really to drag the priest into a position where you're actually able to dot them. So you can uh, double dot. And also to try and CC the monk on their damage and mobility spells. So I'm going to do a little bit of a quick little explanation of how Windwalkers do damage. Um, first of all, they have their Kyrian ability, Kyrian Covenant ability that increases their mastery. I think it's about a minute cooldown and it you can tell by the combat meditation buff they get, they also get a Kyrian buff. But um, the combat meditation one is the easiest one. Uh, a lot of classes get it if they pick Pelagos. Uh, it, it's like a blue, um, blue looking man and it's, uh, it's Bastion looking basically. Gives them mastery, a lot of mastery. Mastery is a really good stat for Windwalkers. Uh, that's the first cooldown. Second one is Storm, Earth, and Fire, which are the two images that pop out. You've probably seen that before. And thirdly, Zuen the White Tiger. Zuen the White Tiger is actually nuts now, especially with the legendary Windwalkers play. Um, when they pop Zuen, for 20 seconds, they have 33% haste. That's undispellable. Basically, a bloodlust. Uh, obviously, when they use these three together, it's completely unhealable damage. Um, and also, uh, they're threatening when they use Fist of Fury as well, especially with these images up. So anytime you can cancel the Fist of Fury, avoid getting swept, and uh, pay attention to when those three big cooldowns are up, then you'll have a much easier time against Windwalker Monks. But anyways, let's take a look. So at the start of every game, uh, move off your port. A, a bad Warlock in this situation would be standing on their port still, or going this way when, when the Shaman's over here when my healer is over here. So uh, going this way is generally the best. My goal is to drag him really into the corner of this map in the, un, under the black box. Um, the reason for that is the priest has to come out here or go here or go here. If he goes here, I can drag this way and force him out. If he goes to this pillar, I can drag further up this way and pull him out. Um, Ashram means is a great map for casters in general because you have this positional advantage of where you can drag the healer out. That's the general gist of where I'm trying to go anyways. But um, oh, another thing to look for for Windwalker Monks, 30 second paralysis uh, on your healer is when they're going to pop their stuff and bang. You see pops badge after paralyzing. At this point, what you can do is either port or gate or night fay and try to avoid the sweep, which um, usually will come after the badge or the images. Unfortunately, I was kicked here. So I actually try to night fay away, hoping to get his um, his sweep. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, play Howl of Terror into monks because their images do a lot of damage. Uh, monk images are crazy damage, and uh, without them, monks really don't do it nearly as much. So Howl of Terror is great because you can actually fear the monk, the monk images. Um, but anyways, try to look out for the sweep. As I said, uh, try to pay attention. If your healer gets incapped like this, rolls over the incap. This is very obvious. Incap is about a 20 yard range, I think it is. 15 or 20 yards, I think 20 yards. It's quite small. The monk does have to use mobility to get to your healer generally. 
So you do have time to react in this situation to do something at least. Either fear the monk with Howl of Terror or Port or Night Fae away. Obviously I chose Night Fae and then I feared him as he got back to me. I still have Port now. Um, try to pay attention to what I'm doing to the monk right now. His images are feared. It's on his badge. It's on his Kyrian. This is the Kyrian class ability buff by the way for mastery. Try to pay attention to what I'm trying to do to him right here. I'm moving away, still in range of port. As he gets to me, I tried to port here, but unfortunately I was too slow because he's a global. But um, he pops the second images and Suen here. So I know I'm going to take a lot of damage. That's why I take the gate right now and try to get away. I'm going to pause right now. I mentioned earlier, Pelagris buff, Kyrian class ability buff, Storm, Earth and Fire is up. I'm not sure what this buff is. Dark Arc is up, PI is up, and uh, Zuen is out and images are still out. This is literally the most damage a Windwalker Monk can do. He has literally every buff up. So you need to really pay attention to these kinds of scenarios against Monks. Um, once it's over, he does less damage. He still does a lot of damage, but way less damage. But um, this is straight up unhealable. And uh, my, my heal has still ascendances, but I'm, I'm actually dying through. So I actually have to press wall here. Um, I think this is an okay trade. Unending Resolve is a 3 minute cooldown, whereas uh, Zuen is only two minutes, but if you if you don't react to this kind of situation, where I've I've burned all my mobility, I've used Soul Shape, I've used Port, I've used Gateway, um, you you are gonna just flat out die. So I think it is generally okay to wall in this kind of situation. And um, well, even if I did have mobility, uh, he would be able to get back to me anyway. So I really wouldn't be delaying it for too long. Um, aside from that. This is a uh, pretty bad positioning, I guess, was because he was able to catch up to me. I did relay my port here, and um, I think I think it's a good idea to reposition. Once you take the gate, you can relay a new port and keep dragging across. Is was my initial thought, but he was able to get back to me. Um, it really just depends on the situation of the game and the positioning of the game. But um, yeah, anyways, I move my port here. So in this uh, situation, I have Port coming back up, and his his images are gone. He's burned both of them. I think he's burned Zuen, so he's not going to do as much damage to me. But I still need to respect him a little bit. Um, try to pay attention to the direction I'm going. I'm trying to drag the monk into a spot where the healer can't really heal. By going here towards the stairs, I am moving towards my healer, but there is no way for the priest to lie in, in this situation because of where he is. He he started off here, remember, and he went this way. Uh, in order for him to line me, he would have to go over here, which uh, or over here, where he would, where ulti my healer would be in between to harass him with shears, or he'd have to go around this big ass pillar to stand here, where he would be able to lost me. But he he's gonna take him forever with this sacral ash to go all the way around. So by going this direction here, I'm also moving away from my port, staying in line with the priest so I can double dart, while obviously the monk is just going to follow me to hit me anyways. Little things like this and optimizing your positioning is actually really important because it increases my DPS a lot on the enemy healer. If I'm single targeting against this kind of team, it just simply won't work. And I want to highlight this moment for a second. So I actually saw um, the priest cast Door of Shadows on ulti and I saw he wasn't able to get out of it in time. The monk has sweep up early, uh, again. It's not on cooldown on Omnibar. Um, if you're able to port a sweep and kite the monk and CC the monk as he's trying to do his go, it's very, very, very big. Even though his images last for a while, delaying it and giving your time, your healer time to get out of that door shadow CC into a fear is huge. Because if ulti got door shadowed into a fear and the monk stunned me and popped his go on me, I had no trinket, remember? Uh, I would get absolutely destroyed in that stun. Whereas if I'm able to port his sweep and get away while ulti gets CC'd, um, by the time the monk is able to get to me, hopefully, ulti would have come out of the CC, give me a totem, an earthen wall totem, some heals, and it would be no, no, nowhere near as devastating. So always look for CC on your healer as well while, while doing this. Um, so that you don't get caught with your pants down, basically. So he gets feared here, but... The monk, I was able to port away and then fear the monk and I'm totally fine during the CC chain. The monk still has incap though, which he uses here, but I was able to fear him and just kite away. Look at this positioning I'm doing here. 
I'm going to rewind here because I want to talk about this a little bit more. Look at where the priest is and then look at the direction I'm instinctively going further away from him, pushing him out to follow to heal his monk. And additionally, when he incaps, I howl him at the same time because I know he's looking for something. And uh, I, still have soul, I still have soul shape, so I can also use that to avoid the sweep. But basically, avoiding any damage or getting stunned while you heal a CC is, is super important to surviving. And yeah, here's my positioning. So the priest is over there, and by moving this way away from him, um, the monk, you know, he, he feels sketchy about this. He doesn't really want to chase me. And again, I do the same thing here. I want to showcase this again. So the priest is over here. I'm over here. If I keep going this direction towards the edge of the map, there is no way the priest can kill the monk. And the monk is going to take damage for free. It's essentially free CC. This um, kind of positioning and little efficiencies like this are really, really important. Uh, it's going to add up over the course of a game and just slowly inch you towards victory. Also, keep in mind, I still remember he has sweep up here and uh, I have knife paper. I'm trying to wait for him to pop images or something before he leg sweeps because I know he will, but unfortunately the hex broke and I got stunned. But uh, look how far the priest came out. Do you see this? Look at this again. So I drag the monk. My camera is a little bit awful right now, but look at where the priest is. He's legit walking across the whole map to get to um to get to us, and and now he's just he's just stuck in the open. And after the, after the sweep, I can just port. I'm out of loss of them all, just totally fine. Um, another thing you can do against monks is sacral lash, slow the images. This sounds extremely try hard, but um these images hurt, man. They do a lot of a lot of damage. So anytime you can get away from them, very good. Just throw them a snare and keep kiting them. Uh, unfortunately, he had his port on my the spot I wanted to gate to. But um, yeah, during that whole ordeal, Ulti was able to avoid the hex, and I basically kited out his entire images and curing ability, and uh, basically survive. He did get back to me eventually, but I, I know I said you can't kite a Windwalker monk, and you can't. But against a Windwalker monk, your goal is really to just delay the damage while they have their cooldowns up so that your healer can actually do something for you, which I successfully did um, in that in that go just now. And uh, uh, at this point, if he has to run away, it's, it's just super nice for us. And I actually make a mistake here because the monk was probably going to die to dots, but I walked into his line for a free karma. Uh, ends up not mattering too much. I mean, at this point, I still have gate, he has no sweep, he has no images, the heal is full hex, so I can just sit here and tank him, because I'm toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I'm winning this trade. But, uh, yeah, he gets Zuan. I think that's his haste proc, and, uh, yeah. And he pops images, actually, with it, and I just instantly gate away. Slow the images as well, and the tiger, as you're running away, pay attention to where I'm running compared to the priest again. I took the gate and I didn't put a new port down here because um, I actually wanted to do a sort of loop if that makes sense. Sometimes I don't replace my, my port after gate. What I wanted to do was do a loop like this because I know I can kite him and then I'll be back in port range by doing this this kind of a uh, crescent I guess around the pillar. So this is a kiting path you can also take. Or alternatively I could have put my port here, gone this way to drag the priest out again and then port back into the priest loss, but uh, yeah, it just depends. But again, pay attention to how I'm positioning. After I take the gate, I'm dragging this monk so far away from his priest that there is no way he can really chase, but he wants to because it's getting damp and he's falling so far behind. I'm able to get dots on the priest for free as well because of this. I actually miss my, I actually miss my how there, unfortunately, because I'm bad. But um. Yeah, by, by doing this, look at this, like I force him to dispel UA, he's, he's behind, he has no karma, no diffuse, and he's so desperate at this point to get something on me, to get some damage on me, that it just becomes extremely easy to read him now. Like I know he wants to sweep me, he has to sweep up, and his priest gets hexed as well because he gets dragged into the open. Uh, unfortunately I missed my how there, and I, I was able to port his sweep right now because it was just, it, it was really easy for me in this situation because, like I said, he's under so much pressure and I'm not, I'm 100%. I'm kiting him into the best places. Like this whole setup, 
essentially it was because of the direction I was moving in the game. Just by doing this one little um, movement, it, it drags the monk out, priest has to come out, gets darted, has to dispel, gets hexed as well. And then the, the monk, it's, it's obvious what he wants to do, and I'm able to port his sweep, which is a cool little style play as well that you can do against monks, but... Um, if, if I had stayed there, I definitely wouldn't have had this happen as cleanly. But uh, hopefully this video, or this um this game was able to give you guys a, a little bit of insight into Windwalker Monks. Um, remember, just to cap, recap, pay attention to Storm, Earth and Fire, which is the images, Zoo and the White Tiger, and uh, the Kyrian buff, Combat Meditation. And just really try to CC the, those images and avoid getting fist or furied or leg swept. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.